Maybe you've heard something like this before. You know, he's a good guy, but he voted Democrat. Or can you really call yourself a Christian if you don't homeschool your children? Or can you really call yourself a Christian if you don't send your children to private school? Or can you really call yourself a Christian parent if you do or don't fill in the blank? Or maybe you've heard, if you're a teenager, maybe you've heard something like this. You know, me and my family, we don't watch that kind of movie and you really shouldn't watch that either. Or maybe you've heard this. Um, Man, I cannot believe you would give them your business. Besides, their coffee is way overpriced anyway. And I've heard this one. This is one of my favorites. Oh, you read the NIV. You must not really care about truth then. I mean, if the King James was good enough, if it was good enough for John the Baptist, it's good enough for me. You see, we express our opinions so often as fact. And not only that, we have a tendency to express them in a way that indicates that other people are wrong if they don't agree with my opinion, if they don't agree with my choices, my personal preferences, then you must be wrong. I think that our world is even more polarized today because of social media, because we can find people who agree with us. Um, and if you don't agree with me, then, well, you're just ignorant or you are uh, mean, uh, you're self-righteous, uh, you're a liberal. Uh, you know, if you don't agree with me, then there's something wrong with you. It's not that I might need to change who I am. But man, when we look at this passage today, uh, we'll be in Romans chapter 14. We're going to continue our, our uh, discussion of messy relationships and acceptance. We're going to look at what, what we're to do when it comes to those differences, especially with brothers and sisters in the church. Now, before I go any further, I have to say this. In today's lesson, it is, this, is not, this is not giving freedom for sin. We're not to say, hey, uh, it's okay. You can, you can go and do about whatever you want to do. You can live your life how you want to live it uh, when it comes to sin. In fact, uh, actually the sin that's been brought forth today is when we make big deals out of small issues. We need to be careful that we are holding to the truth where the Bible speaks black and white issues that we, this is sin and this is not. This is, we should live in righteousness. In fact, we'll, and we'll even see that at the end today that we are to strive for righteousness. But there's some areas where the Bible doesn't speak as clearly. Sometimes it gives us principles that we're to live by. But sometimes it's just choices or, or, or personal values and preferences. And so in that, we have freedom. But Paul tells us that if that freedom, in our freedom, the choices that we make in, the, in that area of freedom causes someone to stumble, then we need to check ourselves and consider uh, making those changes. In fact, he even says if it, if it causes someone to stumble, then we need to be mature about it in our faith and refrain from doing that. So I'm not talking about sin and, and a license to sin. So uh, let me give you some examples to help clarify what I just said. Uh, there are some TV shows that promote a worldview that is totally contrary to what the Bible says. A couple that come to mind are like Game of Thrones or The Bachelor. Uh, so, so for me, as I, if, if, from, from what I know about those shows, uh, they just they completely contrary to what the Bible teaches. I don't, I don't need that as part of my life. There are other, there are other shows that are funny or entertaining or whatever. Look, the same thing with with music. There's some music that's just fun, but there's some music that that portrays or promotes a worldview that's completely opposite of biblical truth, and we don't need to fill our minds with that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, or, or, or books. We may, we may read books that, that, are, that are fun, they're enjoyable, they're, they're, you know, they, they're, they're good for us, but there are some books that promote a worldview that's completely contrary to uh, the Bible. Same could be said for uh, video games. Okay, so, so all of these things, we need to be careful. 
and, and it's not a license to sin. And so I know if you're a teenager, probably right now you're, you're thinking, okay, so you said there's some movies, some TV shows, music books, video games, whatever, uh, that, that I'm not supposed to, but, but some are entertaining. How do I know what I can watch, what I can, what video games I can play? So Pastor BJ, help me. How do I know what I can do and what I can't do? And I'm glad that you asked that question. And we're going to consider that question, especially at the end of our lesson today. We're going to see what Paul has to say about that and how we can uh, best determine what is good for us and uh, what, what we should avoid. All right. So if you have your Bibles, make sure you turn to Romans chapter 14 as we dig in here today. So go ahead and read the passage, Romans 14, 1 through 4, and 13 through 19. You can read the entire chapter if you want to. That's fine. It'll be beneficial for you. Um, so go ahead and do that, and I'm going to give you a moment to read that, and then I'll come right back. All right, so um, let's open with a word of prayer. Father, today as we open up your word, I pray that it uh, is revealing to us, that it, uh, that it illuminates, uh, that, that the Holy Spirit illumines the word for us this morning, that we're able to understand. This passage is, is a little different, a little difficult because it doesn't apply to us uh, directly from the first century that we see here. But Lord, there are, there are biblical truths that, that, that transcend time. And so Father, I pray that we are able to understand your word. We are able to apply it to our lives and we are not just hearers, but doers of the word. Speak now and may we listen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So one of the first things that you'll find here, especially in the first couple of verses, is that Paul's talking about eating food. He's talking about there's some people that eat meat, some people that only eat vegetables, and they're, they're both, you, both of you are Christians, you're brothers and sisters in Christ, and it's a stumbling block for, for, for some of you in the faith, in, in the church. That you say, well, this person eats that way, and this person eats that way, and, and they, don't know, they don't agree with me, and I don't agree with them, and so we're having a, a conflict. That's what's, that's what's going on here. Uh, and, and Paul says, one who eats must not look down on the one who does not eat, and one who does not eat must not judge the one who does, because God has accepted them both. So see, if you're a brother or sister in Christ, or you have these personal preferences that are different, you, you got to get over it, because God has already accepted that other person. And so we ought not to put extra hurdles on the gospel and extra hurdles on the fellowship of being believers. We have to be careful with this. Um, so here's, here's the question. How should we treat others when we disagree as believers in Christ? Again, I'm not talking about sin issues. I'm talking about preferences. Like one of the big things that, that has come about, like in the last 20 years, has been style of worship. Like what kind of music should we play? What instruments should we play? Uh, I find it interesting that uh, one of the arguments against drums and guitars was, well, that's the kind of instruments that are in the bars, that those are just honky-tonk instruments. I, I, I actually did hear that. And the guy said that, you know, the piano is what we need. I found it so, well, you know, the piano started out as a honky-tonk instrument. So um, Silent Night was first played for the world on a guitar. It was the first instrument that it was ever heard. That, that song was ever heard was somebody played it on a guitar. Um, and then you read in, 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 in the Psalms about all these different musical instruments that are, that are used in worship. So it, it just became a sticking point for some people. So that's what I'm talking about. So I'm not talking about sin, but I'm talking about preferences. Well, I asked the question, how do we treat others when that happens, especially those believers in Christ, as brothers and sisters in Christ? And here's the first principle I want to give you. If that's the first question is, how do we treat others? The first principle is this. If you have an issue, go to that person directly. Don't talk about them behind their back. Don't blast it on social media. Go to that person directly and say, hey, I have a concern about this. Tell me why you feel that way. Tell me why you like this or prefer that. And then here's the important part. If you're really wanting to seek re reconciliation and restoration, if you're really wanting to seek acceptance and build that relationship, you got to listen. You got to really listen to what the person says. They may have an incredible reason that you hadn't thought of for the things that they do or the reason that they act the way that they do. 
If you can't do that, then here's the other option. Let it go. It's not that important. Let it go. All right. Let's move on to Romans 14, 13 through 15. And so Paul kind of expands this a little bit for us, and, and he, he, gives us a, he gives us a few more um, details. Uh, 13 through 15, he says, so, so he's laid out this, this, this uh, point of contention between the believers in, in the church. And then he says, therefore, let us not judge one another. Instead, decide never to put a stumbling block. So he's saying, if you have these issues, stop judging each other. You know, seek for rec reconciliation, figure out what's going on. But if there is something that really causes a problem for somebody else, then be the mature believer and remove that stumbling block. So if, so if I'm doing something that causes someone else to not be able to fully grow in their faith, that causes someone else to fall away from Christ, even if it's a freedom for me, then I need to think about what I'm doing and change that for the benefit of someone else. Because guess what? Ultimately, it's really not about me. I'm to think about what's best for the church as a whole. So here's, here's um, just a statement that I, I love from our, from our lesson. Our personal relationships are more important than our personal freedoms. Our personal relationships, relationships, more important than our personal freedoms, especially in Christ. So I may have the freedom to do something and, and I'm okay. Maybe I can listen to this music and not be affected by it. Although um, I would say you really need to consider if that's true or not. Um, but if, if what I'm doing causes someone else to stumble, and then, then I need to then I need to pull back away from that. Um, so here's a second question: How can we identify if an action or an attitude is a stumbling block? Now here's some that just come to my mind immediately. If for, for adults, one of those issues is alcohol and how they treat alcohol. Some people say I have freedom to do that because I I can you know the Bible doesn't explicitly say. Uh, if you, if you take a sip of alcohol that, that you're going to die and burn, you know, you're, you're going to die burning hell. It, it doesn't strictly outlaw it as, as a sin. Now, drunkenness and carousing and all these other things. Yes. But somebody says, I have freedom to do that. Now, if somebody else says, I, I don't really want to fellowship when there's alcohol around, then we ought to just think. My relationship is more important than my freedom. And I pull away from that then. And so I abstain from that. Not because I don't have the freedom to, but more important because I value my relationship more than I value my freedom. I value the relationship of my brother or sister. Um, I will never forget. I'll never forget. Uh, there was something going on at my house when I was growing up. Um, it, it may have been... It may have been Thanksgiving. It may have been, it may have been even been that there was, had been a funeral, a uh, death in the family. But somebody who was a member of our family, well, it really wasn't even a member. They were dating someone who was a member of our family. They came out of my daddy's house. No alcohol at my daddy's house. I can guarantee that. This guy waited until my dad was gone, went out to his truck, and popped open a can of beer. So he had respect for my dad when he was around, but not respect enough to keep it off of his property. Uh, that guy's not in our family anymore. So he, I don't think he ever made it into our family uh, because he valued his personal freedom more than he valued his relationship. In fact, he valued his life. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, yeah, he wouldn't do it around my dad. You can say he valued his life. But no, but, but, but really, man, how selfish is it? To act otherwise. So for teenagers, here's, here's one I want to give you. What about other people that, that come to our youth group? We need to let other people into the group. Not just the fact that they can put their name on the roll, but let them come into our group. 
We need to value that relationship more than the personal freedom. I may have freedom to pick the best team that, that, that I think will win at playing basketball or ultimate frisbee, but it's more important that I include people on my team than it is just winning a game. Can you remember who won the, the, the game that we played summer two years ago? Nope, but I promise you that people will remember if they're not, that they're always picked last. We need to value relationships more than our personal freedom. All right, let's, uh, next, next question. And then it was actually in our, in our book. It's a question I, I told you I would try to answer later on. How do you balance enjoying your freedom and avoid and avoiding stumbling blocks? And we're, we're about there. We're almost there. So hang tight. Okay. Um, Romans 14, 16 through 19. There's one verse here that really stands out. One phrase, one passage. We're going to focus in on that. For the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Look, I'm going to teach you something today about biblical interpretation. The fancy word for it is hermeneutics, but you don't have to remember that word. This is just how do we read the Bible and, uh, and, and make sense of us and make sense of it in our lives. So, Here's, here's one thing that you have to do, and kind of a big word is contextual application. What does that mean? It just means this. When the first people that read this, now, when did they live? They lived in the first century. They lived in the first century, when the, the first people that read this. And uh, the, the first century, this is what was going on. Paul's writing this letter. Um, and so these, these, are, these are people who are believers, actually the, the, the letter to, to Romans was written to some, some were Greek, some were Hebrew. Uh, so you had some Gentile believers, you had some Jewish believers that were intermingling in, in the church. They were uh, united in the church, but they had these differences. So we have to consider all of this stuff. I mean, Rome was a big power at, at this time. The, the, Jesus had just recently been crucified. There were people still alive that knew Jesus and had, had witnessed his death, burial, and resurrection. And so all of this goes into account in the first century. Well, we don't live in the first century. I mean, the problem that was going on in the first century was that people, some people were eating and some people were drinking things that weren't compatible with other people in, in the church. That is what's happening. Paul addressed that issue specifically. But we live, we live in the 21st century. We live in the 21st century. So... How do we take what happened here and apply it here? Because can I just be honest with you? I did mention alcohol a little bit ago, but our biggest problems of contention in our church is not that somebody is eating food that was sacrificed to an idol. That's not a problem. So do we just pass over this passage? No. What we have to do is find this transcendent truth that's like a bridge that, that takes us from the first century all the way to the 21st century, to where we are today. What is the underlying truth that's here? It's not about, look, we don't have an issue about eating food that was sacrificed to idols. That's not a problem for Northside Baptist Church in 2020. That's not an issue. What is the issue? The, the, the main truth that is here. Uh, another way to say it, Another way to say it might even be easier is if we are, we, if, we're, if we're going to be uh, applying this truth here, we have to be people who are standing, we have to be people who are standing, and this is going to be a really funny drawing here, we have people who are standing with one foot in the first century and one foot in the 21st century. Uh, this guy's probably really excited that his, that his legs are you know, spread out like that. But anyway, um, he's like, ah, that hurts. So, but we have to be people that, that's actually really distracting. All right. We have to be people that understand what's happening in the first century to be able to apply it in the 21st century. This is for any Bible passage, okay? So how do we, how do, we do that? Well, here, if food that was sacrificed to idols was a division for people in the first century, then I think we have to ask this question. What are things that divide us now? Maybe it's sports teams. Maybe it's whether we wear masks or don't wear masks. Maybe it's politics, like who do you vote for? Um, maybe, it's, 
maybe for teenagers, it's, it's you got boyfriend and girlfriend issues and, 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 and best buddy issues and those things separate us. Maybe it's, hey, you don't wear name brand clothing. I wear name brand clothing. Yeah, well, I'm not a... I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a, a rich punk kid. And, and these things that separate us, these things are trivial. Paul's saying that eating, eating food that's sacrificed to animals is, is trivial. You've got to get over it. But here's the other thing. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but, listen, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what we are to pursue. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let me read from our uh, curriculum real quick. We live to make God's glory known throughout the earth. We live to build his kingdom and promote his purposes. We live to see our Savior return in power and glory, ready to serve him. So in verse 18, let's keep track with this idea. Don't overemphasize trivial things. But instead, promote peace, even if it means giving up the things that, that, that I enjoy. And I should focus on building up our church family. Again, relationships are more important than freedoms. So how do I know if I can watch this or, or listen to that kind of music? How can I balance my freedom while avoiding stumbling blocks? Here it is. Discipleship. Discipleship. Yeah, that's, that's growth. That's spiritual growth in the Word and in the Spirit. I want to encourage you to study God's Word. Learn what it says is right and wrong. Psalm 119.11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Hide God's Word in your heart. I'm telling you, it's helpful in determining what's okay and what's not okay what's right and what's wrong. And in the meantime, as you're still learning this, as you're still navigating this, i to tell you another, this one may be even harder for you, for some. Trust your parents. Trust your parents. God has given them to you and he's given you to them. And they want to train you up in righteousness, in peace, and in joy. If you still have questions, ask me. I've had people before ask me, hey, Pastor BJ, what do you think about this video game? I'll give you the, my, my honest answer. If I think it's okay, I'll, I'll tell you it's okay. I may tell you, hey, just trust your parents. And then sometimes I've said, man, I don't think that's good. I don't think there's anything redeeming about that. You know, ask, figure it out. You're still learning, you're still growing. So let me just summarize we want to stand firm on the truth. We want to stand firm on what's right and what's wrong. When it comes to opinion and preferences, however, we want to be gracious and accepting others. And lastly, I want you to be a student of God's word. Seek righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Stand firm on the truth. Be gracious with others. Be a student of God's word. Have a good day.